Hi folks, this is Harion for C Banner. We are uh, happy to uh, meet you in another video on facilitation. Today we are going to talk about uh, the modern view on facilitation. Uh, remember that's the first uh, video we did it on uh, facilitation, that is the modern view. What we mean by modern view is there are two parts to the modern view what we were talking about. One is it should be uh, uh, active movement, there is no or probably active assisted, uh, assisted whenever there is some range which is unable to, if the uh, system is unable to move in a particular range we can have a uh, assistance. So active assistance is probably what we call it as facilitation. The next part is we are not facilitating individual movements, we are uh, facilitating a, a functional activity. Chari, yeah? We are activating a uh, uh, body as a whole, not as uh, individual uh, parts. Those are the two things we have already said about. So, you know that when you are going to do a functional movement, right? If you are doing any functional movement, you need, we need to create force. And we know that the force is created, um, the end organ for force creation is the muscle, right? So, the muscle has to create force so that your body is moving up and down and things like that. Now for creating force, we will have, when the muscle is created force, we will uh, uh, classify it into two parts, uh, the neural part and the non-neural part of it. What I mean by neural part is, if I am going to uh, create a force, there should be a um, brain activity, that activity comes to the spinal cord and it tells the muscle uh, to uh, produce force, to move, right? Uh, that is the uh, neural part of it. <coughs> And the other one is the non-neural part of it. What do I mean by non-neural part of it? We know that the muscle has one of, uh, one of the properties of the muscle is the elastic property. What do I mean by elastic property uh, and what are the uh, value of elastic property and all those things you already should have studied in school. We will just uh, recap it. Now if I have, uh, I have two sticks right in my hand, one is a pencil another one is a green stick. Now, if I have a stick like this, right, and if I'm trying to bend it, right, basically I'm trying to stretch it, and if it is a sort of a non-elastic structure like this, I can't bend it, right, nothing happens to it. If I sort of do this faster, then probably it will break. But at the same time, if I have a structure which is elastic in nature, if I sort of bend it, right, if I bend it, and leave it, it will go to the original position. That is what uh, elastic means. Now, when I am bending, what happens is the system gains energy, right? That is what we call as a potential energy. So, when I am uh, having the stick in this position, this is the basically a stretched position, the system gains energy, and when I leave it, it goes to the original position, that is, your potential energy is converted into a kinetic energy. So, how can we use this in facilitation? So what we can do is, we can use starting positions in such a way that uh, your muscle is stretched so that it is gaining energy and it can help you in converting into a, a kinetic energy. So in the next part of it, we will use one example and try to uh, uh, use this in uh, um, facilitation, right? So, to uh, help you understand uh, how to utilize a uh, non neural uh, uh, component of um, force production, uh, we are going to, uh, I am going to demonstrate using sit to stand. Remember, when I am doing sit to stand, I have to create a force in the uh, upward direction to move upwards, right? I have to move upwards and uh, forwards. I am moving upwards and Forwards. Now, when I am going to uh, produce this force, if all the forces are coming from the neural component, right? That is from the um, the nerves, uh, the nerves and the neurons activating and activating the muscle. It might be difficult. Say, for example, a person with a neurological deficit, right? So, what we can do is we can keep the system in a sort of a, a posture which can help in utilizing the non-neural component, part of it, right? So one of the common things, uh, if you take any book or anything, they will tell you that to keep your foot in uh, dorsiflexion, right? The, this should be in dorsiflexion, not like this. 
it should be always in a DOS deflection, right? And you can also see that when you are going like this, you are actually going into DOS deflection, then only you will stand, right? Uh, even though I am doing it slowly, but uh, when you are in normal posture, you do not do it slowly. So, <clears throat> what is the value of keeping it in DOS deflection? If you assume that this is neutral portion like this, like the stick, right? The stick is a neutral portion. If I am dorsiflexion, see how the stick has gone, right? If I am in more dorsiflexion, you can see the stick has gone more and more stretched. We have already seen that if I leave the stick, it will go upwards. That is, it has gained so much of energy. When I leave it, it will move upwards. Likewise, this gastronomus and soleus, when it is stretched like this, and when I am going like this, it is stretched fully and not only the uh, activity of the, uh, the gastronomous soleus from the neural component, the, the uh, amount of force it has gained can also help me in moving upwards, right? That is what we mean by using the non-neural component. You can utilize like this for a uh, lot of physical activities, lot of functional activities. You just have to uh, think like that, right? So, this, uh, this video is about using the non-neural component and uh, uh, appropriate starting posture to facilitate a functional activity. Thank you until uh, we see you in the next video. Also, please subscribe to our channel so that you can uh, access more videos like this. Thank you.